here's a really nice uh, canter. Thomas Jefferson. Made by McCormick's Distilling Company. It's a lot of detail on the face. You can have this dog down here, but the blow is podium. And as you look, he's working on the Declaration of Independence. Has this quill in his hand. All around, it's just very detailed. I mean, the horses, uh, horses, the dog's tail. There's the sticker on the back. Now this buckles on his shoes. Shows you different ones. There's George Washington, Betsy Ross, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Paul Revere, Patrick Henry, John Paul Jones, and John Hancock. Thomas Jefferson was known as the author of the Revolution. It was in the spring of 1776, the heat of a long summer was beginning to bake Philadelphia while five men, a select committee of the Second Continental Congress, began to discuss the declaration of ideas and grievances against the King of England, while Congress had, which Congress had to resolve. Leading in his international prestige, and precise wisdom was the aged Benjamin Franklin. His practical wisdom was aged Benjamin Franklin. Then you had John Adams, the fierce exponent of total independence, representing New York. And Robert R. Livingston, designated to serve his country in later years by helping negotiate the Louisiana Purchase, noted journalists. Roger Sherman of Connecticut. And then you had Thomas Jefferson. He was young and sandy hair and noted for his mastery of the pen. Thomas Jefferson, descendant of an old Virginia family, had been on, on the colony frontiers in 1743 he had been reared with classical Greek education and had an easy familiarity with the languages and writings of the Greeks and the Romans. Admitted to the bar in 1767, Jefferson had built a successful legal practice that enabled him to turn to begin the construction of his still famous home in Monticello in 1770. He was a pretty learned man. He knew several languages and <clears throat> he could build things like homes and design. He's kind of an architecture. He knew architecture and how to design homes and buildings and kind of an inventor too. So it's kind of a Renaissance man all the way around, knew how to do lots of neat things. So he was a pretty successful in everything he did and had a lot of talents to give to the declaration writing of the Declaration of Independence and in the government of this nation.
He was uh, appointed by George Washington as his first Secretary of State. And he, after the government had been formed, and he was known to help in uh, a lot of scientific uh, research and things. The nice thing about this collection is the boxes have a whole life story of each person on the side. It's even got a little history of uh, Ben Holiday, who was the founder of the McCormick. Um, distilling company which produced this series of uh, porcelain works were made by the American uh, Porcelain Company for McCormick Distilling Company it's a really nice porcelain decanter of course his head comes off Cork is missing, was still a little bit of it there, so he uh, has to be handled very carefully. But uh, still a really nice, nice uh, statue to add to the bicentennial collection. And uh, I think they did an excellent job. They did a lot of research on the colors of the clothes and what they wore and how they looked right down into uh, the buckles on their shoes. Everything was meticulously researched before they created this series and the artist did a really good job of sculpting and creating these uh, classical uh, decanters. that are more like statues, artwork to me. Beautifully done. Well, thank you for letting me share this with you. Goodbye.